Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve this puzzle, The Nameless Beast, by King Lux, by giving you a strategy so advanced it doesn't even have a name, just like the name of this puzzle. And in fact, I'll show you how it works. I'll give you all the logic behind it and all the other advanced strategies, techniques you're going to need for this. It's an amazing trick. It's going to blow your mind. Click below if you want to give it a go. With that, it's solving time. So, Keen Lux is the master of creating puzzles that have a big one stepper. And Keen Lux is also really good at telegraphing. So, what you see when you look at this puzzle is you notice there's a lot of digits up here in block one. Keen Lux, they are tempting you to look up here and you go, oh, what can this cell be? An eight, nine. Well, when there's a buy value cell in a corner, this is a dare. Keen Lux is saying, I dare you to figure out the significance of this and how it's going to help you solve the puzzle. I've done many Keen Lux puzzles before. I'm telling you, I knew to look here. I had solved this puzzle before, and that's why I got to show you how it is done. Because, like I said, it is not a name for the strategy other than that it is logical. What else is remaining in this block? A six, seven, eight, nine. Now, the other telegraphing, and by telegraphing, it's like what digits is King Lux giving us and wants us to focus on? And it's going to be any house, real common block, that has a lot of cells filled in and has some kind of pattern to it, right? So you notice not only do you have five cells filled in, but it's one, two, three, four, five on column three and row three. So we want to kind of look at that. And if you go over here, you'll notice that you have the seven, eight, and the six, nine. So these are actually by value cells. That's going to be a six, nine, and this is going to be a seven, eight. And if you come down here, you're like, oh, well, there's only a nine. I don't see a seven. Well, you also got to take into fact that we have a hidden pair. Seven, four, four, seven means the seven and the four are limited to two spots in block eight, which is right here, which makes those sevens a pointing pair. Now you notice seven and nine here means this has to be a six or an eight. And this has to be a seven or a nine. Okay, huge, huge. Now we filled this out. It's like, okay, that is interesting. What is the other thing that we need to notice about this puzzle to make some progress? And it, it's actually looking at these sixes here. The other six comes there and cuts across. The sixes are limited to two spots in block nine. So I'm using a little Snyder notation here. Remember Snyder notation anytime in a three by three block. When you only have two possibilities for a candidate, put those marks in there. If you solve one of those cells, or you can eliminate one of those cells for that candidate, you can solve the other one immediately. That is the key point. That's what you're going to need to pay attention to here, okay? Because I'm telling you, we're going to be able to figure out how to solve or eliminate one of these cells and solve it for the other one. How do we do that? You got to keep watching. And also, after I show you this, Stay tuned because I got more to show you. There's a lot more solving going on. And it reminds me of another great puzzle that uses a similar type uh, strategy and logic. And so I'll put a link to that at the end. That's why I want you to watch all the way to the end. You're going to love this. So what we want to do is I'm going to use a little bit of color in here. And we got to go, okay, what is the strategy here and, and the what ifs? This 8 or 9, what do we know about this? This 8 or 9, this is an 8 or 9. That same digit has to be in one of these three cells in block four. And why is that? And we don't, you know, if it's an eight, obviously it wouldn't be an eight right there. It'd be one of these two cells. A nine, it'd be a nine in one of those two cells. Okay, fine. But what it does is it does, it's limited there because of this nice little shelf created by the one, two, three, which means then that this, whatever this cell is, in one of these blocks would be in one of these two cells. It would be limited to one of those two cells. Right, you'd agree. And then conversely, the key thing to keep in mind is if it's an eight, it'd be here, and this is the other eight going across row seven and eight. If it's a nine, it'd be here, and this is the other nine going across row seven or eight. So the eight would be, you know where the eight would be in row seven or eight, you know where the nine would be in row seven or eight, depending on what this is. What does that tell us about where an eight or nine would be in this block? Well, based on this, since row seven or eight would have those digits, it has to be one of these two cells right here. Okay, it has to be right there because the complement of this nine would be there. If it was a nine, if it was eight, the complement would be right there. So we're just saying whatever that number is would have to be one of these two cells right here. Now let's go across the rows. Same idea, 
this whatever this is is going to be limited to one of these three cells right here in the same way you know if it's the nine it won't be in that cell and it's the eight it won't be in this cell but it will have to be in one of those three cells and then it's limited to one of these two cells here in block three right because this digit be one of these cells here be one of these cells uh, this this type of logic is used in variants all the time but what it does for us it's the same thing i just explained down here in row seven or eight now in column seven or eight if it is a nine then this is a complement if it is an eight it'd be here and this would be the complement so we know that column seven or eight would have the two digits in the yellow and then the complement here which tells us where could that yellow digit be here in block nine and it has to be one of those two cells right this is the logic whenever a candidate is limited to two cells in a column and then two cells in a row and they intersect guess what that the only way to satisfy the solution for that cell is to put it where it intersects it has to be one of these it has to be right here in row nine column nine it cannot be here because then it would not be able to be placed in row nine and it can't be here because it would not be able to be placed in column nine get it so it has to be in this intersection well that tells us an eight or nine has to be here it's got to be the same digit that's right there and if that's the case we can remove that six and once we remove the six we can solve the six for right there this is beautiful this is amazing strategy like i said remind you of another puzzle actually not by keen Lux. it reminds me of one by shy so stay to the end and i will give you the link to that and the solve i did with that um, but the strategy it's similar to what's called a sudoku firework it's not that if you put it through a solver it's going to pop up with this thing called a grouped alternate inference chain but that really doesn't do justice to what we just did here uh, i like nameless strategy i like trick that will uh, blow your mind all those are pretty good names for this nameless beast works pretty well that's what we got but you now can solve a six here and we are going to be able to do some more solving right hopefully you can see since that's a six this has got to be an eight and that's got to be a nine right and then we can get rid of these nines boom and we can get rid of these eights and you think okay we're an easy street they're like no not an easy street yet you need to keep watching and paying attention okay uh, something else now with the six these two sixes means you can solve for six right here which eliminates the six from right there and now if you know seven eight seven eight and eight pair means the only place left for six in row three is right there so you get rid of that six you got a seven nine and a seven nine okay something else to keep in mind uh, if we want to look across here two three or five is what's remaining because you got this hidden pair uh so and you see a two and a three right here so this actually has to be a five and since that's a five um where can a five be here in block four it can't be any of those spots and it can't be there because of this five so you can solve that for a five and now with this five and these two fives we can solve for a five right here we can solve for a five right there um and we make a lot of progress with the fives can we keep going with the fives i don't think we can but we just solved a bunch of fives lovely right now let's keep on moving here what else can we do okay i can put a you know a two three here just kind of as a placeholder that's not necessarily what we need to go with the puzzle but let's look at the ones ones can't be any of these three spots so one's gonna be one of those two spots we got a one right here this has to be a one and now with this one right here this has to be a one as well and then now a one cutting across row Six, row four and column four means this has to be your one and we got two spots for a one there so let's look over here and go okay one and one this has to be your one and we solve the remaining one right there nice thank you keen Lux. now you're kind of unlocking a lot of what we can solve here so let's go back to those fives five and a five means this has to be your five and now we got one place left for a five up here in block two looking good looking good okay let's now look for some where we have some good restrictions okay three's coming down we know we need a two or three the three's got to be in this spot and this has got to be your two nice and then uh with this three it's like what else can we do you know um i'm trying to see if there's another spot for the three not really and then the two can we solve for the two pretty quickly ah uh, not at this time but 
what we can do is kind of look right here in the middle and go, what is remaining? We're missing an eight and we're missing a six. So we got the sixes. This has got to be your six. That's got to be your eight. And now eight and eight means this is going to be an eight. And now we can start solving everything up here in block one. And now we are going to know whether this is an eight or a nine. It has to be a eight. Boom. And I can actually immediately go right here and solve that for an eight. But I'll show you how it works. Eight, eight. This is an eight. And now you see eight and eight cutting across. That has to be your eight. So that logic holds into play, doesn't it? We solved all that stuff that we we're talking about that we had to solve it. So that nine makes this a seven. Nice. And we got our eight in the corner like we asked about. And now what else can we solve here? All right, let's just uh, look. We know we can solve this cell right here because this has got to be one of these two digits uh, to fill in this column. We're missing a four and a nine. So the four means this has got to be your four. That's going to be nine, which means we knew we would be able to solve that for a seven. And like whatever was left over, we knew we could solve that one, which is kind of nice. Okay, and then down here, what are you looking at? We got um, a two, three, and a nine. Can we do better? Eh, not really. I don't need to fill all that out just yet. But if we go over here, I'm always going to look for where there's the greatest restriction. I'm looking for a three and a nine here. Can we do that? Yes, because of this nine, this has to be your three, and that's got to be your nine. All right, and let's just move on up to this. these two cells. Looking for a two and a seven. Can we solve two or a seven? Um, uh, not yet. So what about coming down? And yeah, one thing we can do, see how the three cuts across here? That means the three is limited to one of these two spots. It's going to be a pointing pair of three, so the three can't be there. So three can't be in these two spots, can't be here, and because of this three, it can't be here. So this actually has to be your three. So I'll just use that pointing pair real quick to kind of get us back onto the solve. So now we're looking for a two, four there. I don't think we can actually solve the two, four yet, which is fine. Um, let's keep on moving here, right? We got a three and a nine across the bottom. See that nine? That's going to do the duty for us because then this is going to be your three. That's going to be your nine. This is going to be a two. And that's going to be a three because of this three right here. And then we can solve that for two, and we're back on track. I always want to focus here on re restricted uh, blocks, if I can, because they're easy to look at. We're looking for four nine. That nine is going to help us out again. So here's your nine. Here's your four. Great. And then now we have a full house. All right. Got for seven. And this is where it gets a little sticky, a little thorny. Keep practicing. Keep watching. If you're good at solving this part, you'll get much faster to solve because... 8% of the puzzle is solving these hidden naked singles and pairs, pointing pairs. The faster you get that, the more accurate you get at that, the more satisfaction you get. And so if you're sticking with me right now and you're doing really well with this, great job. Keep it up. I want to keep encouraging you to do well in your solving and keep pushing yourself to do harder and harder puzzles. Okay, what do we have up here? It looks like a 2, 4, and a 6. Can I make some uh, easiness out of that? No, no, I can't. So... Again, I want to look where's the easiest things to solve. We got the 2, 4 there. I really can't do the 2, 4. I already told you I couldn't do the uh, 2 and the 7 yet. So let us look. Uh, I'm just going to do this whole thing. What do we got here? 2, 4, 6, 7. The so 4, 6, 7, 7. Do we have... Yeah, that's... Yeah. They can't really solve that. Oh my goodness. I feel a little embarrassed here that I'm not just finding that simple solve, right? Okay, so what would be here? It would be a 4, 6, or an 8. And yeah, okay, now we got it. Where can the 8 be across row 2? The 8's got to be right there. Now it's a little slow on, on finding that 8. All right, good. Now, once we find the 8, now we're, we're making more restriction across here. Uh, the 4 and a 6. Can't do the 4 or 6. Let's look down here. What do we have? You got a four, seven, a two, three, four, seven. So this would be a two, four. This would be a two, seven. And you remember, this is a two, four. This is actually a two, four as well. I, mean, I did not want to solve, I didn't want to show that two, four, but I guess I will now. So that has to be a two, four, that has to be a two, four. So now we know that this is a naked pair. 
And what do we have left? We have a six and a nine. Uh, so we'll be able to go, okay, there's your nine. So that's gotta be your nine. And this has gotta be your six. Cool. All right. And then remember correctly, uh, looks like two, four, got the two. Now we can solve this because this has gotta be your two. That's gonna be your four and that's gonna be your four. All right, now we can do the seven and the four. Take care of all those markings. Get to the end of this puzzle. Okay, we got the four down here. We got a nice full house. What do we want to solve that for? A six. Okay. And what do we got? Two spots left, two and a seven. Funny that we can't even solve that yet, but we can if we look right here and go, this full house still needs a seven. There's seven, there's two. Then cross straight over here and go, there's two. And our last digit is a three. Think you got these kind of strategies figured out? Check out this other puzzle. It's also going to blow your mind with this creativity and unique logic. Thank you so much, Canelux, for letting me feature your puzzle on this channel. I've enjoyed it. This was part of the Wild West Pack. Been super fun. If you want to help support Smart Hobbies, click on the Buy Me Coffee link below. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching.